Do I need headphones? But you don't, no, you shouldn't need them. Good morning and uh, welcome to uh, this week's edition of Council Matters where we're joined in the studio by uh, Councillor Sean Hawhey from uh, Clontoff. Sean, welcome to Council Matters. Great to be here, thanks very much. Sean, um, I've got to get it out of the way straight away, the elephant in the room, the the TV series that was made about your uh, your late father. What? How did the family make of it? What did you make of it? Well, uh, we were a bit apprehensive about it uh, in advance. There was a lot of hype uh, and a lot of um, anticipation about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were very uh, apprehensive uh, when the first broadcast came. Um, I don't really think, it, you know, now that we've had time to reflect on it, I don't really think that it captured his personality. Uh, it didn't uh, capture all aspects of, of, of the man. Mm. Uh, and so from that point of view, we were a bit disappointed, but it certainly got the nation talking, all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll be honest. I didn't think it remotely captured uh, the essence of the man who, uh, you know, who I'd known growing up. So, and you, of course, you were you weren't even in it. So, <laughs> no. Well, I, in one way, I'm kind of glad about that. Yes. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, like he came across as a, as as a very unlikable character, and you know, people who knew him, yeah. uh, people who knew him personally, not just his family, but yeah. uh, friends and constituents, and that uh, found him much more warm and uh, and outgoing. So I don't think that came yeah, across. Yeah. yeah. Look, uh, uh, your father went to the same school as myself. We don't criticise in public. <laughs> uh, old Joey's boys. And so they uh, stick together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we 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 may have differences, but uh, we don't air our dirty linen in public, as we say, or even our clean one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sean, just to uh, um, just to start at the beginning, many people were actually writing you off uh, recently, and then you shocked them all by uh, what I can only call a sterling performance in the last year's council elections. Was the um, shall we say the Sean Hohe political obituaries were they a bit premature? Well, I suppose they were, yes, yeah. A lot of people uh, tell me I'm very brave, that I was very brave to go forward for the local elections, mm. you know. If I was reading the, the newspapers every day, uh, you know, prior to the local elections, I wouldn't even have got out, got out of bed, not alone yeah. contest an election. So, uh, um, I've always done public service. I, indeed, it's, it's, what I, it's what I've been involved in from a very young age. You're a former Lord Mayor of Dublin. Indeed, indeed. Mm. But yeah. even from a young age, you know, in, 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 in when my father was a TD, you know, uh, public service was an element of that, uh, mm. helping him out in his work and so on. So public service is what I do. It's the thing that I do. Mm. And therefore, when the opportunity came to go for the local elections, I'd said, well, this is this is what I'm going to do now. Yes, yes it was very, very interesting because I think it might have been on the journal I saw it, or, or, or Facebook or one of the social media. Somebody was saying, well, this is a bit of a step down, isn't it, you know, for a man who had been a minister for state. But you came back and I thought this was very, very, uh, uh, yeah, a, a very shall we say, politically uh, astute move to say, no, it wasn't. Representing the people is a privilege. And that was what that was the way you interpreted though, that you weren't, if you like, a Premier League player coming back to Le the League of Ireland. You were very happy uh, to represent the people of Clontarf. Absolutely, yeah. I was elected first to Dublin City Council in, in 1985, which mm -hmm. is a long time ago now. So That's was, 30 years ago. Yes, yeah. yes you're right. Uh, but there was a bit of nostalgia about it coming back to Dublin City Council, uh, apart from um, the, the work that had to be done. And uh, there is a, a great honour to represent uh, your capital city. Mm -hmm. I'm a proud Dubliner and I feel Dublin has many challenges. So I felt uh, that that's where I could make my, my contribution in politics on Dublin City Council. So I was delighted to get back there. Yeah. Well, Having watched the podcasts or the webcasts, which I think uh, Dublin City Council do a, uh, a fabulous job with them, uh, you coming across, because you and I have, uh, we've spoken, I've interviewed you in the past, you're coming across as a much more confident personality uh, than previously. And I just wonder, which is perhaps the reason why I brought up the issue of the dramatisation, um, have you finally uh, stepped out from that uh, big shadow? I suppose so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, going back, going back to the drama. Like I, I certainly have put all those events uh, mm -hmm. behind me, and as a family, we have, and I think as a people, we should, we should learn from what happened mm -hmm. and, and and move on because there's a lot of, course, of problems yes. yeah. uh, facing the country at the moment, which need which need to be yeah. uh, addressed. But I, I've been out of the doll for 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 four years, and I think you get a great um, uh, um, insight into the door when you're looking at it from outside and you realize that it is a bubble mm -hmm. Very and, much and so, all the people it? in there are in a bubble and mm -hmm. they sometimes logic goes out the window yes. and i think it's been a very useful exercise to to take a step back 
uh, and to observe what's going on and to see what's wrong. Uh, and uh, maybe that's where some of the confidence is coming from as well. You can be more relaxed about it and, and more objective about it in relation to what's going on there and the issues that need to be addressed. Yeah. Uh, right throughout my time growing up on the north side, the name Hohi was synonymous with uh, Dublin, uh, uh, Dublin North East. Um, are we ruling out the possibility of a Hohi name being in Dublin Bay North? Well, it's coming close to decision time. Uh, it, uh, yes, uh, I, I gather uh, Fianna Fáil will have all its candidates in place by by April, by the this end year? of April. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, when it holds its Ardesh. Uh, so at the moment, I'm consulting with the local party organisation, mm -hmm. with party headquarters, and taking soundings in the constituency as well. So I'm certainly considering it. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there's all sorts of issues that have to be taken into account. The party have to take gender quotas into account and so on. So uh, a decision in that regard will be made, you know, fairly shortly. Well, all I can say is from the, uh, uh, you know yourself from looking at social media, I do some, uh, not so much canvassing, but I do some observations of what's happening. Uh, the word I am hearing is, is that if Fianna Fáil have great hopes for Dublin Bay North, and second of all, that that could well revolve around the concept of a brand and i mean that in the kindest mm -hmm. terms in other words a familiar name or a familiar personality that must all go well if that was the case yeah well i certainly have name recognition but <laughs> as you said yourself i've been knocking around for a long time so yeah. people people know me at this stage they, mm -hmm. they know what what they're going to get if they did vote for me you know they 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 yeah. they, they, they they know what i stand for and i think they know that i'm reliable and trustworthy as well so i uh, that'll uh, that would certainly count for something in an election situation uh, yes yes well i've covered a few election campaigns in that part of the world and all i can say is, is that anybody who uh, takes a hockey campaign for granted does so at their peril. John, let's move on. A um, couple of issues that have come to mind. Uh, one that has been quite contentious and very controversial, particularly up uh, in my part of the world, Clontarf Rohini, is the issue of lead in the water. What uh, uh, brought this to your attention and what do you think the issues are here? Well, I, I suppose it all happened since Irish Water um, started installing the water meters and it's certainly um, becoming very apparent that there's a huge problem with uh, lead in the water supply. Mm -hmm. And one of the hotspots uh, is in, in St Anne's estate in Rohini mm -hmm. uh, and um, Dublin City Council as agents for Irish Water have carried out some tests uh, and they're, they're now carrying out a more comprehensive uh, study of St Anne's. And it does seem that there's a major problem there and that people's in, uh, internal piping will have to be replaced. Um, um, I think um, uh, the uh, Irish Water and the Environmental Protection Agency reckon that there are 150,000 homes throughout the country mm -hmm. uh, uh, that have a problem in relation to lead content in their water supply. So it's a really serious issue and I don't think it's been given the attention that it, it needs. It's going to take a huge uh, investment uh, by Irish Water, but also I think the, the householder is going to be stuck for a bill uh, possibly in the order of €3,000 to replace their own internal piping and I really believe that a grant scheme is needed there uh, to help householders in that situation. Yes. Now again I'm, uh, I'm not qualified to discuss it in anything other than anecdotal terms but there's a suggestion, however mischievous, that the water, uh, the lead was shaken off the pipes when the meters were going in. Have you heard that? Yes, this this is uh, this is um, a controversy. Certainly, mm -hmm. uh, Irish Water uh, are they deny mm -hmm. that you know that they're meddling around with the, the with the pipe <laughs> work and putting <laughs> yes. putting in the water meters. Yeah. They deny that that's creating the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I'm not so sure. I I, I think uh, you know the problem really only emerged. Mm -hmm. uh, when they started, as I say, messing around with with the pipework, um, mm -hmm. so uh, presumably all the, the the lead was disturbed in the pipes when 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 this work was 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 carried out. But um, Irish Water are saying that they 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 are carrying out a comprehensive survey of of of, of St Anne's, and mm -hmm. we're, they said it would be available in in January. And this is is now um, we now into uh, the end of February. And, and people are really concerned. Um, mm -hmm. They want to get their water tested. They want to know uh, is their health at risk because it is a threat to health. You know, it's, uh, it, could, well, the, this is what I. I was going to ask you then um the implications uh since i heard about this the implications i uh determined were i will not drink water from the tap i, I boil it and so on and so forth now people tell me that if you're making coffee that boiling it doesn't necessarily make a difference if there's lead in it um if that's the case 
uh, we're either going to be going around like a bunch of zombies in the uh, in twenty years time on the north side because of uh, lead poisoning. Uh, if the, surely that um, should be how can I put it expedited in 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 those terms so that we at least know what the uh, the facts are. I think so. Um, so houses built uh, prior to the nineteen sixties that that's that's they have the problem, uh, and there's a lot of houses like that. Of course uh, there are. Uh, yeah. I think they reckon it's about uh, one in twenty houses throughout the country. Yes. Uh, so um, but probably much more so in Dublin. Much more so in Dublin, yeah. yeah. I think the the HSE have advised certain householders where the tests have been uh, published. They have adv yeah. HSE have uh, written out to householders in Rohini and said you must not drink your water. And those people are, yeah. are 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 heading down to the supermarket and spending endless amount of money buying bottled water. And it, it needs to be expedited. It really does. Yeah. What would Anybody, anybody listening to this who hasn't heard about the issue before is probably going to be thinking, oh my word, I better get my water tested. What's the situation? Can people get their water tested? Uh, yes, although I I, don't, I wish them luck. Uh, Irish water mm. is the first point of contact. Yeah. Now, they, they have had very bad communications uh, with Not the public. Great, <laughs> <laughs> I think they're trying to uh, improve. Yeah. But uh, So Dublin City Council are the agents for Irish water. So the first point okay. of call is Irish water. They, in turn, will contact their agents, Dublin City Council, to go out and carry the test. But there's a, a, a huge backlog there as well. Um, um, because more and more cases are, are, are coming are coming to light. Of course, light. there are five percent of the houses in the country, and maybe yeah, ten percent in Dublin. That's going to take a while, isn't it? It's going to take a while. Uh, mm. They reckon uh, nationally, Irish Water will have to spend uh, two hundred million uh, euro to replace their pipes, or to in some cases to to give them a coating. Uh, 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 just to prevent the lead problem, uh, and then then there's the, the position of the householder who also has to pay mm -hmm. up to th three thousand euro. So I I think the the housing grants of Dublin City Council need to be modified so that mm -hmm. uh, this can be taken in under that scheme, or else uh, a, a, another possibility would be the exceptional needs payment of the health board, uh, that this should be considered an exceptional needs payment. Yeah, it, it, it's something when I heard about this and I thought to myself, well. It's a strange one in a way because I don't want to buy into the whole Irish water uh, controversy but it seemed to me that if, if perhaps you're only able to use the water for half the function that there's you know that you're actually being charged for because generally in our house I'll only use it for washing these days um, it seems that I'm char being charged a great deal more for water um, that I'm not necessarily going to use if that's the case. Um, it, 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 do you think that that may be an issue then, Sean, as well? Yeah, well, I, I, the legislation um, passed by the Oireachtas recently in, in relation to Irish water has a provision whereby if the water is not drinkable, mm -hmm. um, that you, you don't have to pay for it. Uh, so this is a, this is a grey area. and I, I think our, our legislators uh, need to examine that a bit more carefully. Uh, if the water is undrinkable because of of, of lead content, um, then I don't think the householder should be charged for it, but it, it certainly needs to be clarified. Sure, yeah. Sean, and, uh, let's move along, because an issue that uh, both of us have, for family reasons, have quite an interest in, is the 1916 commemorations. Now, the way I'm seeing it at the moment <clears throat> is, particularly in Dublin, we've always got competing uh, commemorations. We've got Aon O'Reardon doing his central government one, and then we've got Dublin City Council, probably under Sinn Féin's auspices, doing another one. Do you think perhaps, not leaving all controversies aside, that maybe we should just get our act together and do one good one rather than two half-baked ones? Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to inform you also that I, I, Fianna Fáil have set up a commemorations committee. There we go. And I, <laughs> well, Fianna Fáil did have a role in this. It, it did. <laughs> uh, Although, to be fair, so did Sinn Féin, even if it's not the same Sinn Féin. Okay. Um, um, Eamon O'Keefe is chairing it, and I'm on the committee as well, okay. being a grandson of Sean Lamass. But it's, 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 it's a yes. wide uh, representative uh, committee. Um, I think the government were very slow uh, mm -hmm. to on this one. Uh, it seemed to catch them by surprise, two thousand and sixteen, and they're you know. So I think they've known about it for a while. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> uh, it's strange, but yeah. uh, uh, so maybe the vacuum is being filled by by other groups. But mm -hmm. what I do want to say uh, uh, here is that we're about to announce on Durham City Council a grant scheme, uh, uh, okay. uh, and it's to encourage local communities to uh, to carry, to engage in in uh, local events and local restoration projects and and local research and so forth so um you know if there's a like the Rohini Heritage Society or the Clontarf Historical Society or whatever I'm calling on them and right throughout, okay. throughout the city to to do a bit of research this grant scheme will be announced shortly uh, there's grants of up to 500 euro 
uh, that's one uh, scale, and then there's uh, other grants between 500 and 1,000 euros. Okay. So this will encourage local communities. So whatever the government do, that's fine. Whatever the city do on a city-wide basis, that's fine. But the city council is also encouraging local involvement. Is it? Uh, uh, I'll come back to this afterwards, but is it purely geographic or can it be a cultural group? Uh, these grants? This grant yes. uh, oh, uh, it, it would be... Uh, uh, all all applications will be will be considered to okay. be a flexible a flexible scheme yes okay now because something i have been talking to people about because i remember 1966 and i thought 1966 different time mm -hmm. we have a very great opportunity to really show 1916 in a much different in a much more positive light in the sense that uh, a much more diverse light that you're talking about now. How do you feel about that, Sean? Is that uh, like one of the main complaints about 1966 was it essentially excluded the entire Anglo-Irish uh, population? Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Well, I think I think uh, both government and Dublin City Council are very keen to promote the, the decade of commemorations. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and we, you know, we've had various events. We've had the the 1913 lockout was, was, was commemorated significantly and so on. So we're working through a, a decade of, of commemoration. So these events should be inclusive. And I, I think we have come a long way as a society. Mm -hmm. We, we recognise the complexity of our history now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that and that's, is as it should be. Uh, so I think uh, from the, the, the commemoration of 2016, I think uh, reflection should be a big part of that and, and to re reflect on the events and, and to reflect on the Ireland of today and, and, and where, we're, where, where we're going and, mm -hmm. and what we need to change. Something that, I, and again, uh, I, I don't want to take this to, to too personal a level, but my our first cousins their grandfather was in the gpo and he was there interned with collins and uh then sent to frongo and sent to lewis mm. not as illustrious as yours but nevertheless my family are very keen to be involved in that now most of them live either in britain or america has any consideration been given to um like we did with the gathering of some sort of in gathering for people who would be abroad and uh who this would be very important to them. Yeah, well, well first of all, um, and, uh, relatives, yes. they're very proud of the involvement of, mm. of their uh, relatives in, yes. in the events, but mm. I, the relatives won't have a, a veto uh, on Oh, no, 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 no. no. I, know I, I just want that. to attend, Sean. That's yes, 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 but, uh, you know, there has been some controversy about this, you yeah. know, that the relatives are, are demanding this and demanding that. They have a role to play, yes, yeah. obviously, mm -hmm. and they should be, um, you know, um, um, involved in all aspects yes. of, of the preparations. Um, yeah, I think uh, the government, again, are... are um, they're anxious to to uh, to, to, to promote it, it? Uh, internationally as well. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and the experience of the gathering is there, so that is certainly being looked at. I, I hope that yeah. everybody gets their act together to yeah. to, uh, to do that. And uh, we'd also hope that uh, any of those people who are interested, they maybe start rooting around in the attic because you'd be amazed what sort of memorabilia or. Uh, um, shall we say, personal effects might still be around from uh, from those particular times. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a huge interest now, again, in, in, in those times. And people are uh, beginning to carry out research into their own families and so forth. And there is new uh, information coming to light and so forth. So from that point of view, it's, it's a very, very positive thing as well. Yes. Uh, again, moving along, Sean, um, something that... It's come and gone in the news over the last couple of years, and it seems to be back in again, is the issue of the Bearview footbridge. Now, I, I, I'm, as a, the one beside Joey's, I'm old enough to remember when there was no footbridge, and we used to dodge the traffic, but having said that, the traffic was a lot lighter than it is now. Um, how is, the, is, is this back as a, uh, as a live issue, or is somebody just running with it again? Uh, well, the uh, the council have just published the Fairview Marino Local Environment Improvement Plan okay. two thousand fourteen two thousand seventeen, uh, and this is going to uh, coordinate all council activity in that area in relation to roads, footpaths, graffiti, shop mm -hmm. fronts, community development, and so forth. So it's a very positive plan. Mm -hmm. So the issue has emerged again in that context about uh, there was public consultation in relation to that plan. Uh, uh, on street surveys uh, online and so on uh, and the issue of the naming of the footbridge uh, came up again so as it happens I, I had a motion passed at the North Central Area Committee mm -hmm. last Monday um, uh, asking that you know that widespread public consultation take place it has been uh, sure, upgraded yeah. recently as well so it, it, it yeah, uh, it's a very useful facility yeah yeah so, yeah. so uh, I, I think it would uh, bring the community together mm -hmm. uh, if we had a, a competition uh, mm -hmm. and people putting forward their suggestions and so forth um, um, 
Any uh, thoughts yourself? Well, yeah. uh, uh, I know the one suggestion was the, the Bram Stoker um, 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 yeah, footbridge, but yeah. there is a, a park um, uh, outside Bram Stoker's house the, uh, the named the Bram Stoker Park. Crescent. Yes, yeah. But I'm told that all sorts of interesting people have come from the Fairview Marino area. Billy Barry, Billy James Barry, Joyce, Michael, yes. John Sheehan, Kevin Hepburn and Larry Gogan, Maury Potter, Oscar Wilde, Rosie Hackett, Thomas Clark and Kathleen Clark going back to 1916. So these are suggestions, but mm -hmm. um, there, there is... A, a, there has there was a suggestion at one stage that uh, uh, that that awful tragedy in Fairview Park where uh, a young man uh, yes, uh, a uh, uh, Declan uh, Flynn was 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 murdered there, mm -hmm. uh, and there, there there some consideration is is being given to that as well okay. in in the past. So uh, the the commemorations naming committee uh, will be meeting shortly to decide how best to proceed and how best to consult publicly on this issue. The only reservation I would have, and I would go back to uh, the case you've mentioned there of Rosie Hackett. Um, I'll be honest, when I when when it came out, Rosie Hackett, I had to do a bit of a Google myself, and uh, and you find Rosie Hackett, and I thought, well, I can understand why they would have said, well, we're going to do a woman, and we're going to do something related to nineteen sixteen, roughly speaking, but. When I looked into this, I thought Rosie Hackett would have been only about five or six down the list. There were at least four others that I thought were more deserving, but they weren't connected to the Labour Party. So uh, yes, yes. <laughs> that's all. I just wonder, Sean, can we avoid politics on that? Oh, well, I hope so. I wasn't on the last council yeah. now, so uh, I, I don't know how that uh, commemorations mm. naming committee worked. Uh, I, I I gather Rosie Hackett has some connections with with the the Fairview area as well. Okay, yeah, uh, so uh, quite a few. I noticed you left out Maureen Potter. Uh, oh well, I certainly didn't mean to. Uh, oh no, 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 that's what I'm saying. Maureen was certainly uh, was certainly oh, there. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, but we were growing up, and uh, but I think James Joyce lived everywhere, didn't he? Uh, yes, yes, he's probably more, 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 more. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably more a, a national figure or an uh, international figure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we we it would be the hope that that we would keep uh, party political politics out of okay, it yeah. and. and yeah. And, and see what the public are genuinely saying in relation to the issue. Yeah. Just to throw you a curveball, Sean, I'm not <laughs> expecting an answer. Some of us out there in Clontarf, we'd actually like the promenade named after a uh, a very respected local politician at some stage, uh, a man who was associated with Dublin Bay. <laughs> oh, yes. Because, uh, uh, I mean, as I say, it's, uh, it's a promenade. be easy enough to... Uh, uh, but uh, I, have, I haven't heard that suggestion before. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's 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 a good one. We 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 had another meeting of the council yeah. recently, uh, and um, uh, we, uh, there was a presentation made about biodiversity yes, and yes, how yes, they want great. to uh, to create a whole biodiversity uh, area. Just down in, by the causeway. Well, no, encompassing the whole of Dublin okay. Bay. Oh, excellent. Uh, excellent. And actually, I, I raised that point Very about uh, Dublin Bay Loftus, you know, pioneered the, the bay and yes. all the issues associated with it. Uh, so uh, we, we just leave that hang there and we'll think yeah, about that. Now, the yet. reason why is just that when you were talking about the footbridge, before it was the footbridge, the first time I ever saw Sean Loftus was when he was running for election and we were going over to Fairview Park to as uh, football and he had this old... He had a car with a, a trailer on the back and two boys in football jerseys wrestling, which he couldn't do now because it was yeah. so dangerous. Yeah. And one of them had on his back turnover tax. So <laughs> that, oh, he was fantastic. Uh, yeah. he, he, he certainly knew how to attract attention. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Sean, but uh, we've, we've got time for one more, I think, and that is uh, Rohini Beaumont have uh, had some aid-friendly initiatives. Now, for, old, uh, for somebody who's <laughs> close enough to the pension like myself, tell us all about this. Well, this was a, this is a, a national initiative uh, okay. uh, uh, from the HSE and local authorities. Mm. Uh, but to, to pin it down in in, in, in Dublin Bay North, uh, Rohini was selected as one of the areas uh, whereby the public would be uh, consulted again, the, the elderly of Rohini, uh, to see how to make the, the village and, and surrounding area more age friendly in relation to roads, footpaths, traffic lights, uh, ramps, uh, community facilities and so forth. So that plan has been published mm -hmm. and launched and will now will now be implemented. Little things like um, uh, the, the pedestrian operated signals, if you just gave it another 10 seconds for elderly people Indeed. to cross and, and so yeah. forth. So very practical suggestions have, have come forward. Uh, and again, it's very much rooted in the community. Uh, there was a local committee set up, uh, people like uh, Con Clark and Rose Daly, and I don't want to leave anybody out, Leo George, David, and several others. Yep. Uh, and you know they, they are obviously the pillar of, of the community, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in pillars of the community in Rohini. Uh, and so this plan has, has come forward. And now it's up to us as the councillors to uh, provide the resources to, uh, to implement it. At the moment, it seems to be Beaumont and Rohini 
do you see this as perhaps being some sort of a template that could be rolled out for other communities, particularly on the north side, because we have a, we're, we're a fairly homogenous lot out there. Yes, uh, well, the, the, the Beaumont one is actually specific to Beaumont Hospital. Yeah, okay. And that's at an early stage, but it yeah. would be the first uh, age-friendly hospital okay, uh, yes. uh, in, in the country, I, I understand. So that's at an early stage of preparation. Uh, but yes, but there are, there are other places around the country have been selected, but uh, uh, Rahini was certainly the, the pilot and absolutely it could be replicated in, in, in other areas. So um, does that mean we'll, instead of having pensioners on trolleys, we'll have children on trolleys instead? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yes. <laughs> Last but by no means least, Sean, I mean, uh, we don't really have the time to give it, but I just want to raise the issue of uh, you, that you've uh, uh, you've identified career guidance counsellors in schools. Um, what's, the, what's the story there? Is, is this a victim of cutbacks? Yes, uh, I was in the Department of Education and Indeed, Skills you were for, for, state for, yeah, for four years, so I, I was very familiar with this issue, but it, this, this is a, a recent cut whereby this uh, specific designated uh, career guidance uh, counsellor in schools was, was 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 abolished and like we have students now just have to fill out their CAO forms and yeah. it was a, a service that was really missed and certainly it, of all the cuts uh, in education this is one that should be reversed. Last but by no means least, will, will we describe this because you've mentioned Oscar Wilde as knowing the price of everything and the value of nothing. Absolutely, couldn't have put it better myself. Sean Hohey, we uh, as I say we we wait with bated breath to uh, hear what happens in Dublin Bay North, but uh, I'd be very surprised if uh, the Hohey name wasn't prominent as uh, as they come to deciding candidates for uh, Fianna Fáil. So Sean Hohey, pleasure to talk to you.